Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Game Week 22. In this series, our aim is, if you follow the instructions here, the guidelines, do whatever you like but within these boundaries, you'll hopefully finish in the top 5% globally, which means you'll do alright in your mini leagues. So we start by looking at how the players did in Game Week 21, which seems a long time ago now of course. And for the expensive goalkeepers, two of them did all right, Pickford and Raya. And the cheapest keepers, they did nothing. For the expensive defenders, look at that. The top row all did very nicely, or at least did all right. The cheaper defenders, Gabriel got 17. He's very popular, owned by a lot of managers. So most managers who have Gabriel got a green arrow. And some managers who didn't have Gabriel also got green arrows. But he was actually quite a big difference this week regarding if you got a green or a red. And then the cheapest defenders, none of them played. Regarding the midfielders, the expensive midfielders did nothing. That happened sometimes. The cheaper midfielders, Martinelli got 14, Prowse 9, Richarlison 8, Gordon 7, Sterling 6. So they did quite well. And then the cheapest midfielders, Palmer returned again. Palmer is absolutely worth having. And then the cheaper midfielders did nothing else. But Neto's back. He scored today in the FA Cup. Doesn't help the FPL scores, of course. But it's good to see Neto back. Regarding the more expensive strikers, Darwin scored. Darwin definitely seems to be doing better this season than last season. He's a player worth having. Jesus, five. The rest, nothing. And then the cheaper forwards, Morris, seven. The rest, nothing. Uh, I've looked at teams that I know are following the system and the majority did get green arrows this last game week 21. I got a red, but that's all right. <laughs> it's, it's only a game. I've got a long, long time yet. I can still catch up and I'll be all right hope so the goalkeepers for the coming up game week 22 edison i've made him a green he is expensive at 5.5 but he's got a double game week in four game weeks time which could be two clean sheets and the three weeks before that could be three clean sheets so he could get five clean sheets in the next four game weeks that could be 30 points he rarely gets more than six points for a clean sheet and man city are very good at letting in just one goal per game but if you've got nothing else to do and you're burning a transfer and you can afford to get Edison, you may as well get him in. Or if you're playing your wildcard, and I don't recommend you play your wildcard, but if you are wildcarding, Edison's probably worth getting. Ray is okay for Arsenal. Leno's okay for Fulham. Onana's worth selling. I think you've got him. He's off in the African Cup of Nations. And even when he is around, Man United aren't great. Flecken... Definitely not worth buying. I've not made him orange. He has, does have a double game week in four game weeks time. But in the next five games, I think it's quite possible he's not going to get any clean sheets. Sanchez is injured, but may be back for game week 23. Johnston, if he plays, and he's missed the last few games, but if he does play at home to Sheffield United, that's a nice fixture coming up. And then Pickford, always a lot of fun. I do like Pickford. For the cheaper keepers, they're kind of all bench fodder. But if you play any of them, that's fine. And if two of your keepers are two of these three, that's all right as well. It gives you money for elsewhere in your team. So if you've got any of these, that's fine. So defenders, Trent is back. He's fit. Absolutely worth having if you can get him into your team. Even though he's going to blank in game week 26, he's absolutely worth having. Trippier, you don't need to get him in this week. And some people will be selling him to free up some money. And Newcastle haven't been great recently. But after this game week, Newcastle have a nice run of fixtures. But he's not green because he's not worth getting this week if you don't have him. Poro, he's worth having. Green, Saliba's worth having at the moment. White, not as popular as Saliba. So if you're going to get one of those two, it's probably worth getting Saliba at the moment. Walker, new entry here. Man City, five nice fixtures in the next four game weeks. Plays every game at the moment. It's worth having, but a 5.4, there are other defenders that are also good. So you've got a good choice of defenders here. And a stupid and definitely worth having. So Brighton have got a nice run of fixtures coming up. And he's quite an attacking player. And he's going to be highly owned. So definitely, definitely worth it. Regarding the cheaper defenders, Gabriel's still all right. Now, I personally wouldn't be buying two Arsenal defenders. I don't like having two people at the back from the same team. Although I do sometimes do it. But if you have no Arsenal defenders, you may as well get Gabriel. Unless he's flagged. He was flagged earlier on. Akanji have made red. He often doesn't play, it seems, at the moment. If you want a Man City defender, get Walker instead. So Akanji is a sell. 
Your doggy's all right. Cash is a sell. He's not getting enough minutes. Their run of fixtures isn't good enough. Just get rid of him. So the ones that I'm marking as sell, in case you're unsure of, just means I'm not going to report on them again. You don't have to get rid of them. They might do all right, but I'm not reporting on them, and I'm assuming we're selling them. Colwell's okay. Conter's okay. Pinnock, although Pinnock's got a double game week coming up, the run of fixtures isn't great, and there are way more than five defenders better than him in the system. So you don't have to sell him, but he's sellable if you want to move him on. For the cheapest defenders... These are just bench for the release. Sinesi's all right. Maguire's, he has been injured, but it looks like he's not flagged now. He may be back, but Man United aren't great. And I'm saying the sales, let's just sell him now because the other Newcastle defenders are fit. He might not get a game for a long time now. Regarding the midfielders, the expensive midfielders, Salah is sellable. So last time I did one of these videos, he was off in the African Cup of Nations. Since then, he's got injured. So... He's not going to be around for the next three or four game weeks, probably. And then he blanks. So you can hold on to him and hope he's back in a couple of game weeks. But that's an awful lot of money to be sitting on your bench when you could be doing something else with that money. And I suspect a lot of managers will be selling him. Some have already sold him, of course. So his price is probably going to go down a little bit more. Uh, you don't have to sell him, but he's going to be doing nothing. And he's blanking in game week 26. De Bruyne, new entry, definitely worth getting. So if you've got Salah, switching to De Bruyne is a nice easy move for you. Sun, he's still sellable because he's in the Asian Cup, but he will be coming back in the next one, two, three game weeks, probably. So you don't have to sell him, but he's holding up a fair bit of money for you. If you've already sold Salah and you've not got enough of De Bruyne, then of course Sun to De Bruyne is a good move. Saka is still green. I'm aware other content managers generally are not picking him up. Some are selling him, but they still have quite a nice run of fixtures and his numbers are still pretty good. He's ticking along. He's not explosive, but he does keep getting points. So I've got Saka. I'm probably not selling him. Odegaard's all right. Fernandez, I've got him as orange. He's kind of borderline orange and white. He's pretty good. Man United are pretty bad. So he can be frustrating. But then if he suddenly got 30 points in the next four game weeks, I wouldn't be that surprised. So I wouldn't be buying him probably, but I wouldn't be desperate to sell him. But if you got him, you want to sell him, that's okay. Because there are certainly five midfielders better than him at the moment. Bowen, he's worth having 8.1. Foden, he's worth having. And of course, De Bruyne and Foden have got five games in the next four game weeks. Regarding the cheaper midfielders... Diego Jota is a new entry with Salah injured and out for a while. He seems to be a strike that's going to be getting good minutes. So he's worth having at 7.9 million. Madison, he's now back fit. So he's absolutely worth having. You see, there's more than five midfielders there. Absolutely worth having. Martinelli's all right. He did well last game week. Sterling, he was borderline orange, but he at least does get their minutes and does get chances. And although this game week he's away to Liverpool, then he's home to Wolves and then away to Palace, he could do something there. So if I had Sterling, I wouldn't be desperate to move him on, but I'd be okay to move him on. But he's all right. Richarlison is still just about green. With Madison back, is that going to... Of course, it's going to affect him somehow. We don't know which way it's going to affect him, but he's still green for now. Diaby's okay to move on. He's sellable. He's not going to get the minutes. So, fine to sell DRB if you still got him. Gordon, it's worth having. I've still not bought Gordon in. Every game week I'm threatening to buy him. He's a good buy though, definitely a good buy. And if I was wildcarding this game week, which I'm not, I would be buying Gordon. Ward Prowse, funny old character. If you have him the whole season, you'll get 100 points or more from him probably. But he gets 2 points, 3 points, 2 points, 9, 2 points, 3 points. So, you kind of have to play him every week to get the points because you never know when he's going to be getting his points so but it's a lot of money six million compared to what you could be getting for that and then the cheapest midfielders palmer if you've not got him you probably should be buying him he's worth having gibbs white still trying to see where he's going to be playing with the new manager there there are better midfielders to get but he's kind of okay you don't have to sell him and we're on to cheap players now he turned away in the asian cup I've still got him. He's on my bench. I'm not intending to sell him at the moment because he's nice and cheap. He's like bench fodder. Neto's bench fodder, but a good player. 
Garnacho's bench fodder. I almost made Garnacho green because he is a good player. They're playing Wolves, West Ham, Villa, Luton in the next four. He could get points in all of those. So he's very good bench fodder. But he's if I could have him or Palmer, I would take Palmer. But Garnacho is a perfectly good player and he's nice and cheap. So Haaland is green. I think he's currently marked as 75% chance of playing. We may not know by the time the game week comes around if he is starting. So if you buy him, you're gambling a little bit. He's not one of my captaincy choices. There's a spoiler alert there because we just don't know he's going to play. But as soon as he's back fit, you probably are going to want Haaland. Watkins, I thought about making him green, but I've kept him as white. He's ticking along. He's okay. Jesus, I think he's worth having. I've not made him green, but I think he's worth having. And Kunku's, he's possibly injured still. He's been disappointing for Chelsea, and there are you can easily choose three strikers better than Kunku from this system. Darwin, he's very good at the moment. So much better than last season. Absolutely worth having. Solanke, there's only 0.3 million between Darwin and Solanke. If I could afford Darwin, I would take Darwin over Solanke, but I wouldn't necessarily sell Solanke to get Darwin, if you see what I mean. But you've got three green strikers on here and there's probably going to be some more to come up. Alvarez. So we're expecting reduced minutes from him. So I've not made him green. If Haaland or De Bruyne was going to be out for a few game weeks, he'd be absolutely worth getting because of the run of fixtures and the double coming up. But because we don't know what minutes he's going to get, I wouldn't be buying him now. I definitely wouldn't be buying him. But he's okay to hold if you've got him. He's worth having, worth playing. Gio Pedro. He's green because Brighton have a nice run of fixtures. He does score goals. He got a hat-trick in the FA Cup this weekend. And he's like bench fodder. Five and a half million. It does free up an awful lot of money. And then we've got Morris, Adibayo and Archer. They're simply bench fodder. We're now going to look at the bench order. The suggested bench order. You do whatever you like. This is just my suggestion. But there is reasons behind what I'm saying here. So the first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. So Sanchez and Onana, they're not even playing, so of course they're going to be on your bench. Then Flecken away to Tottenham, Turner home to Arsenal. It is a home game. I do like home games, but it is Arsenal. Dubravka away to Villa. Newcastle are gradually getting better, but Villa are very good at home, so I wouldn't expect a clean sheet there. Pickford away to Fulham. Quite possibly not a clean sheet there. Johnson at home to Sheffield United. If he plays, there's a chance of a clean sheet. I mean, a reasonable chance of a clean sheet. Ariola at home to Bournemouth, that's nice. Leno at home to Everton, that could be nice. Raya Arsenal, away to Forest, it is away, but it is Arsenal. And then I've got Edison as the best keeper for this game week. Regarding the other players, there's about 10 players in the system that I'm not even showing you because if you've got them, you're playing them. Of the other players, the first player I show you that you've got, I suggest goes position three in your bench, the next one position two, the last one position one. So we've got Pinnock of Brentford, Archer, Morris, Adibayo, Maguire, Senesi, Colwell, Gibbs White, Consa, Diaby, Neto, Sterling, Nkunku, Fernandez, Ward Prowse. And now we're going to get on to some good players that it's a shame to bench if you've got them, but difficult decisions have to be made. So Jao Pedro, Udogi, Trippier, Martinelli, Odegaard, Garnacho, White, Saliba, Gabriel. And as normally, if you've got two Arsenal defenders, feel free to move one of them a bit further down this list. Solanke, Jesus, Walker, Gordon, Palmer, Estupinan, Porro, Richarlison, Madison. So any other player you've got, you should be playing that's in the system. And again, this is just my suggested order, but there is reasons behind this order. And then regarding captaincy... It's quite wide open this week. You have quite a good choice. But I'm suggesting Foden is a pretty good shout for captain this game week. Because we don't know what Haaland's minutes are going to be, if he's even going to play. We don't know De Bruyne's minutes. So Foden's a pretty good choice. As is Darwin. As is Saka. Any of those are okay. But I suspect Foden's going to be the most popular. And Foden, if you've got him, is probably the safest choice. But any of those are fine. Other captain choices... Jogo Jota's going to be all right. Probably De Bruyne is going to be fun. And Bowen could be all right. So of these, I'd suggest if you can, make one of these captain, one of these vice captain, but don't choose two from the same team. 
if you can't do that or you don't want to do that, then any of the players we looked at that were green, they'd probably be right for a captaincy shout. Probably favour attacking players over defending. So any midfielders or forwards, they'd be the ones to choose. Regarding the background picture, and I do sometimes struggle to think what to do here. Today is January the 28th, and that's Elijah Wood's birthday. And he played um, Frodo Boggins, <laughs> Frodo Baggins rather, in Lord of the Rings. So there we go. There he is with some of his uh, little hobbit friends chasing after a football. There we have it. That's my suggestions for the 5% series for Game Week 22. I hope you enjoy watching these videos. Thank you very much for watching and all the best. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>